How are you feeling? How are you enjoying uh, your experience at Comic Con so far? I'm loving it. Even just like you said, like the Doctor Who fans, especially, it's so welcoming to us. And it's just so overwhelming. To, uh, it's just crazy. So, so I haven't caught. I caught up with you guys earlier, obviously. But you've got you've been down signing autographs and things like that. Yeah. Now, what's the response been to you? Is it has been positive? Oh, lovely today. Yeah. 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 Loads of uh, meeting all you guys. It's always wonderful. That's what. Yeah. I, I don't think. Oh, I don't think I'd do this if it wasn't for how wonderful the, the fan base is. Yeah. Because it's just everyone's just so lovely to chat with, everyone's so unique and individualistic. It's it's really good fun. I love it. Really nice. And everyone's just got nothing but luck to show. I mean, someone brought us Easter eggs today, and it's just like. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> just say no one's ever brought me an Easter egg. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're talking about individuality. You know, it's the first time I have ever interviewed uh, a Galian prince. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not often you can say that. No, it's not. I don't think I'll ever be able to say it again. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's fantastic to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. Uh, these guys, pleasure is all mine. These guys here, some of them are interested, some of them are filming, some of them are. I, I think there may be a couple of questions we may build a prize out of the audience. And I just want to throw it straight out there. I've got you for half an hour. And I know there's going to be tons of questions out here. I'm just going to throw it straight out there. Um, okay, who, who wants to ask the first question? They're all shy now. Okay, go on, go for it. What's it like entering into this type of universe from previous jobs that you've done before? Well, um, I mean, it's always, I've always dreamed to be a part of, like, even throughout my career, I was always doing like a one episode, a two episode, and I'd always dreamed to be a series regular in a show. Um, and then this came and it was just like a series regular in the Doctor Who show was just like way above my expectations. So just the, the response and just the, it's just a completely different experience. I mean, for other jobs because you really get to experience a special fan base and I've never experienced a, a fan base like Doctor Who before. So for them to just be so loving and welcoming and just to introduce us to a completely different world and be so loving is just honestly just the best feeling in the world. So it's really great. That's essentially that. Um, but, <laughs> uh, you can't say much better than that. But going from my my other main role uh, in Mr. Selfridge, obviously period drama to sci-fi, is very not jarring, but jarring. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, completely different uh, and a wonderful, wonderful change. Um, how much I love doing Mr. Selfridge, I've got to say. Uh, sci-fi is more up the street, so doing, getting to do that was. Wonderful, and welcome to these guys. It was a dream job, it really was. And these guys absolutely love you. If I ask you anything, you know, uh, slightly wrong today, I'm going to be hung on the tree. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Absolutely, they love you. So, um, what, you know, one of the first things we, we got, I just want to talk a little bit about the characters mm. uh, in the show. Is there anyone here that doesn't, hasn't, doesn't know class yet? Is there anyone here that, that hasn't watched it? Okay, this is what I was, I was getting at. Uh, obviously, tonight, though, it's on, you've got it already on your, on your slide box. Uh, so there we go, you're going to go home and watch it later. There we go. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, each of your characters so we, you know, we can really, everyone can appreciate it. Uh, Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go. Uh, so yeah, I play Charlie, um, Charlie Smith. It's about the most generic name you can get. <laughs> is that a bad idea? Um, uh, so Charlie is a gay alien prince, uh, Rodian. Uh, mm -hmm. So the Doctor has saved him, brought him over to uh, to Earth to try and basically save his species because he's the last of his kind. Um, and yeah, I mean. Were you happy playing such a sort of run-of-the-mill character? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd like a bit more diversity next time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, it was, uh, that's part of what I loved about the character. It's just so different and so unique that I could really make it my own. Yeah. Um, so I had a lot of license to do what I wanted to do with it. And, yeah, yeah, as I said, dream job. Really, really good fun. Yeah. Uh, my character is Ram, who's essentially the school cool dude. Um, cool. Who goes, I'm sure as you all know, goes for a ton of. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he goes for a lot of trauma from the beginning of the episode, from the beginning of the series till the end. He's just, you know, just going for a lot of trauma. Just he, in the beginning, he loses his girlfriend towards the end. Was it too much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, he's just, you know, a character who's 
appears to be, from the outside, you know, this cool jock when really, as people describe it, the cinnamon roll. Um, someone <laughs> <laughs> I actually really love that because it's like, he looks, they say he looks like he could kill you, but actually he's a cinnamon roll, and that's perfectly describes my character because from the outside he looks like really hard, but essentially he's just, he's got such a big heart and like, he's really emotional, a lot of things affect him, and he's always crying or bleeding. Or <laughs> so, so, yeah. That's nice <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely brilliant. Listen, I'm, I'm hogging you. I could, I could keep you here all day. Uh, have we got any other questions for, uh, from the audience there? Yeah? You there? What was the hardest episode to film? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go on, yeah, go on. I was, I mean, probably six. Um, it was the most fun to film, but it was the hardest because it was sort of just all based in one room. And That's what I thought. Sort of bounce yeah. off each other, and it was just all down to like the acting rather than like a bunch of like crazy locations and everything. Um, but it was just really fun to film that episode because the way they done it as well was quite method because in that episode we're all trapped and there's no light and they actually um, blacked out the whole room to essentially feel like we're in prison. And then at the end of the episode they let down all the blinds so then the light came in and it was like, wow. It genuinely felt like we'd been trapped for two weeks. Um, so it was hard. Towards the end of the episode, we got a bit crazy. Like there was corpse in a lot of times. Like we couldn't stop laughing. Um, it was really fun. Like honestly, the best episode to film. Yeah. Was it like claustrophobic? It was really claustrophobic. Yeah. And obviously, his character is claustrophobic, and it yeah. was just really cool to sort of, you know. Yeah. Um, I, 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 episode six is definitely the hardest ep episode to film because it was really carried off of our backs. So there was a lot of pressure put onto us to. It was like, kind of like a. Play. A, a play, yeah. a 45 minute play on screen, so yeah. that was a really interesting challenge for us. But the hardest scene to film was the last scene. Oh god, yeah, probably, yeah. That was just, that was a full week of just this one scene. Um, and we didn't have enough time, did yeah. we? We, were, yeah. we ran over, which you're just not allowed to do <laughs> on TV because people start getting antsy and you have to start paying out a lot of money to all the crew. Um, so yeah, we were running over and uh, it was really tough, that last scene, but I think it really paid off, mm -hmm. I hope. And that was the only scene that we filmed in chronological order. So for the whole week, I think we filmed that film, it was like from beginning to end, it was just filmed it all in chronological order. In that yeah, way. don't often get to do that on television. You yeah. have, have to jump around, you have to come in the morning and go, okay, what, what scene am I doing and where does that fit in with the yeah. rest of the show? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, that episode was essentially really hard, and everyone that's watched it, it's a very emotional episode for pretty much everyone that's in it, especially Charlie. Um, so yeah, it was really difficult to film, a lot of fun as well. That's quite interesting for me, because you, you've alluded several times now to the fact your characters have evolved mm -hmm. throughout the series. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder how how far ahead do you get to see? How, how much are you allowed to sort of start to build that character? How many episodes you see ahead, do you get everything, you say, there we go, there's the series, no. or do you get, you know, this is, how, how far ahead are you allowed to look? Well, they filmed it in blocks, so I think the first um, two episodes was, it was one and two, that was a block. It was three. Oh, was one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Which is actually quite a lot. Yeah. Three episodes is quite a lot to so know. So we got the first three episodes at the beginning, and I feel like Patrick was really special as well, because he would just sort of like, there was even time when we'd get a new script, and then I'd see one of my lines, and I'd be like, Patrick's obviously done his research on how I'm talking or how I'm, you know, he's really written our characters to sort of like suit our personalities in a way. Um, and I feel like even his personality really shines. Like sometimes I'm reading jokes and I'm like, that's just such a Patrick kind of joke. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, yeah, no. And it's shot, it's not sequentially shot, so you're trying to evolve a character mm. and yet you're filming pieces which are ahead and, yeah. and out of time. It's Doctor Who, isn't it? So you're, you're jumping all over the place. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be difficult. It's got to be a challenge for you two to do that. Yeah, I think so. I, I said, we get to do it in, in blocks. So it was the first three episodes, then four and five, and then seven, six and seven, six and, seven. and then eight was on its own. Um, so we don't know that much about where our characters are going to end up. So we kind of have to sort of guess what yeah. we're doing yeah. um, and fill in the blanks. It's quite easy for me because I know the next episode is going to still get crushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's a really interesting challenge having to go in and not know. Yeah. Uh, well, it, that's another challenge for you as an actor to figure out where you stand emotionally yeah. as a character because yeah. that was one of the major tripping blocks I had when I first became an actor. Was coming to a scene and being like, okay, right, so I'm feeling like this. Oh, wait, hold on, that just happened. Yeah. 
That's made of We haven't even filmed that. We haven't. Yeah. Yeah. So no. Yeah, it's absolutely extraordinary. <laughs> I'm hogging again. Right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Um, would you like to move over to the official Doctor Who show once that yeah. like finishes? <laughs> 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 I'll just the questions. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me have a ponder on that. Yeah, yes. That would be so cool, wouldn't yeah, it? No, same. Um, yeah, I'd love to go. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know what? Most of it's filmed outside my office well, yeah, it's it's at Cardiff University. So I'm, I'm a doctor at Cardiff University and I can't go out to my I open the door to go to get a coffee or something. There's an alien outside my van. I'll like, be <laughs> 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 seeing you guys outside. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was actually filming right next to Doctor Who studio. Yeah. And we never actually got to see them. Like, like, sometimes we snuck in to like, check out the TARDIS and all of these things. The was almost at the fire alarm. Yeah, the fire alarm went off and then out of nowhere, like Peter and Phil did, came out and he's did like... Did you set the fire alarm off? No. <laughs> 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 he, wasn't, he wasn't actually supposed to mention it because he didn't want anyone to know. Not at all. <laughs> I won't mention your fingers were crossed then either. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. Then following on from that, ideally, where would you like to see your characters end up? Is there things... Maybe, maybe not situation as such, maybe experiences you'd like to have or things, how you'd like to grow, that type of thing. Yeah. Regardless of what you may or may not have been told already. You know. Yeah, well, well we, we know Ideally, as much as yeah, you, you do. Know, you know, just ahead of us. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we know very little about next series apart from the fact that it is probably happening. With, with, it seems to be pretty good behind the scenes, but um, apart from that, we don't know much. Um, I'd like, I'd, I'd like Charlie and Mateusz to sort things out, <laughs> like, yeah, really, because I just want them to be happy. I really do. Because <laughs> I, I have to, I have to act it out. I to act out. <laughs> Stuff, and I love Jordan. I, I just want us to be happy. I want us to go on and have like a nice, happy scene. So I'd, I'd like us, I'd like some. Hopefully, them, them to not be too traumatised after the end of the series, and well, they're going to be, but hopefully they're working. <laughs> yeah. So, do you feel there's any investment in your character as well? Uh, as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm really invested. I, was, I really want series two. I, I really just want to see how it goes. I think I don't think there's any problem because series two now, um, we we don't know what's going on with that yet, but it's looking good. But of course. Series one is going to be shown very, very soon, isn't it? After yeah. um, uh, uh, Doctor Who is yeah. in America now. Yeah, so we're today. Yeah, yeah. So on Saturday, is it? Saturday, yeah. Yeah, so essentially it's going to be shown straight after Doctor Who, which is which is great because hopefully everyone that watches Doctor Who in America will watch. But it's huge. Um, huge. So yeah, it's looking really good, and the way BBC America has been pushing it is really, really good as well. They've been really pushing the show. And there's real hope. So I'll be able to, you will be able to say, but I'll say it's so much better than the BBC one here. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, I can say it for you. I can say it for you. Another question. So, you're going to have Harley's mission soon. Any thoughts on who you like? Ooh. The new doctor. Yeah. 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 The new doctor. Um, so. <laughs> so. Um, I, I don't mind who it is, whether it's. Uh, whatever race, whatever gender, whatever, as long as they're the Doctor. But I don't, I don't want it to, because I feel, I feel there's a lot of pressure for it to be a, a different gender, a different race, um, just for the sake of it being, and I think that's completely the wrong way of looking at it. it I'd love it to be a woman, as long as it fits, as long as they are the Doctor. Yeah. Um, so, who would, who would be a good, New Doctor, or oh. Catherine Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, honestly, she'd be great. Yeah, um, yeah I can't, I can't put a name on it, um, but yes, I, I really d don't mind as long as they do make a good Doctor. Yeah. But you said there's a lot of pressure for a black <coughs> Doctor or for a female Doctor. Yeah. Why not pressure for a proper Doctor? Because I'm available. <laughs> 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 Seriously, I remember when I first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it was at a read through because we got the character who who was cast at first, and I was like searching up people 
And I remember Vivian, I couldn't find her anywhere because this is actually Vivian's first ever job that she'd done. So she didn't even have like... <coughs> <in room>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I remember at a read-through, we just got in and we met everyone and I swear to God, just straight away, everyone just clicked and we done like a read-through and as soon as everyone said their first line, I was like, that is why he's Charlie and that is why everyone has been cast for that character. Um, and yeah, no, I just, yeah. This is the, it's the sum of your parts, and you're quite diverse characters. Well, yeah, yeah. some of them more diverse than others. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you each bring, you know, a, a piece, a slice to the whole. And that's what I love about it, because our, all of our characters essentially wouldn't bond in school. You would never find them hanging out together. Um, but because of what's happening in Cumberland, we sort of all have to, you know, connect to fight off, you know, all these monsters. But I feel like. When we're together, our personalities really work. Like individually, you wouldn't really connect, but as a team, mm -hmm. like his awkwardness with my, you know, bravery, and <laughs> April and Tanya, I feel like as a team, we really do fit perfectly because of how different we are, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, okay, so there's a crack in space and time in Cold Hill. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of space. But what sort of element or time period would you like to see that thrown through? Um, music drama, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I've, I've heard, I've heard that fan theory been thrown around because obviously Catherine Kelly and my book and Selfridge as well. So that, that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? <laughs> Going back to nineteen. No, for real. That's actually a good point because in Doctor yeah. Who they do it all the time. Um, so it would be nice to you know, like, <laughs> travel somewhere. You know. Yeah, I. I, I I think we have. I, I want to see the future myself. Mm. So I'd love to do some, see what's going on on Cold Hill. How far would you go? How oh, well, far? I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let's not go small. Let's go like 10,000 years in the future or something. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fine. With you. Post, post Trump apocalyptic. Might <laughs> 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 have a society in that moment. I think it would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, another question. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <coughs> Uh, which of your characters would make the better companion for the Doctor and why? Out of just us two? Yeah, fight it out. There's <laughs> 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 only one way to decide this. <laughs> I'll let you go first. I, don't know, I feel like both of our characters would suit. I feel like I could add a bit of street wiseness to the Doctor. You know, he's doing something wrong and be like, listen mate. <laughs> but I feel like with Greg's character as well, I feel like it would be so funny to have like this really awkward companion who just just doesn't have a clue. And he's just like, you know, every time the doctor does something, he'll like search up what the doctor's doing and just... Yeah, I, 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 for Charlie, I think, yeah, it's whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. He's, I think he's quite similar to the doctor in a number of ways Yeah. compared to a lot of other companions. Yeah. So... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing, isn't it? So, yeah. I think that could be a really cool thing, but someone, someone called me too. <laughs> but there's no, there's no really reason to fight this. If I get the roll, I'll bring you both. Yeah, yeah. so, there, we there we go. go. There we go. Bring you both. Bring you both. Okay, next question. You're all really shy. You're all really shy. Yeah, cool. also, any other questions? Yes, go on. Well, I'm predicted. Oh. Where do you think that's going to go? See, that's really interesting. There's a lot of predicaments. Yeah. Even like with me and the Shadow King, like, what is going to happen? Am I dating the Shadow King? Am I... Yeah, I know. I called it. it from the beginning. I called it. Um, so yeah, no, that relationship to see... I, I really don't know how that's going to go. Like, and obviously Quilt with her baby, it's like, I have no idea. And that is why we need season two. So no, you not. genuinely don't know, you haven't been given sort of a story arc, or you no, sort of, sort of what, what, what is you do know a little know. bit, I think it's going to sort of focus so, around the arrival, which is in the last episode, with you soon, the arrival, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's, uh, I don't know how much you can say. Yeah, what uh, you say about the bills? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say it, because, <laughs> no, no, Patrick has, Patrick has an idea for the episode yeah. next series. Um, yeah to do with each one of us interacting specifically with the governors yeah. for various reasons, but it's all like us. I know very little more than that, but... Yeah, that's literally all we know. So. <laughs> okay. Wow, okay. Question there? You were saying about sort of the governors and without spoiling the last episode, 
when you find find that last scene when you saw that scene you went in with what happened, how did you feel when that was that? That was so crazy. Like everyone was walking around the set. Like, Have you read? We were near the end of episode six filming yeah. because. Yeah, no, we were right near the end of episode six when yeah. we got the script. Yeah, it was because like, oh, it was so yeah, gone. And yeah, we, we were setting up something, so we were all off reading in our own little spaces, um, reading the end of the episode. And I think Vivian finished it first and was going, "Oh, guys, see what happens." I stopped Vivian and reading it. <laughs> no, it was, it was so crazy. Like even everyone, you know, was so excited, and I got in trouble. Because we was in episode six, and where we're filming right next to the Doctor Who props cupboard, I was like taking pictures, selfies with Daleks, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, was, and I was, was that after the fire alarm? Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, most people have watched it. So yeah. there was the Week of Angels throughout the whole like, season, and I just didn't bother to take a picture. And the day that I decided to take a picture was the day they was giving out the script. And I, did, I had no idea, so I'd taken a picture, then I posted the picture, just had no idea, honestly, my intention was so pure. Then the, the producer took me away out of episode six, he was like, Daddy, what have you done? I'm like, what? He's like, you're on Radio Times. Like, literally five, I swear to God, it was five minutes later, I was on Radio Times, and I was like, oh, are the weeping angels coming back to class? And I had to stop, like, I was being given told tweets to tweet out to, like, make it seem that I was just, like, messing around as always. Um, so, yeah, I got in a bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and I was so excited. I mean, what, what can you well, do if you're filming right next to the props cover? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, in the first episode, there's something happens to your character. Where mm -hmm. did you have to keep sort of remembering that you don't have a real, yeah. effectively you've got a bionic yeah. part. Well, I mean that's the thing because it, was, <laughs> because it was a doctor that saved me. It was kind of like attached in a very proper way, so it didn't really affect me that much. Obviously, but in the beginning, it was obviously hard to get used to, but eventually, it sort of. You know, I got used to it, and obviously, yeah, like throughout my whole season, I've had to think about all the losses that I've taken, <laughs> my leg, my girlfriend, and <laughs> I was always, you know, thinking about it, and I feel like that's why my character, like, sometimes I felt like my character was a bit too upset, but, I mean, realistically, he should be that upset if you lose your girlfriend and you lose your leg, I mean, why would you be happy? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's see if there's any other, any other questions out there? How do you think the relationship between Charlie and Mateo has developed? Um, is it due to you and Jordan's chemistry? Um, well, I, I'm not going to deny that me and Jordan have some very good chemistry. Like, I was the first day um, when I first met Jordan, I was quite nervous because uh, I, I've never played a gay part. Um, I'm not gay myself, um, so. I felt a real pressure to do it justice, and I really felt if I didn't get along with who I was playing opposite, then it was going to be that much harder. Um, but l luckily, we just got on so well. Um, we hung out all the time on set, all the time. Offset. Offset. We were <laughs> constantly around each other's places up in, up in Wales. Uh, well, it's down in Wales from here. Uh, sorry, I'm very, I'm southern, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, it, I do feel like us getting along so well really helps. Uh, I mean, it's inevitable, really. So, I know that's down to him more than me. He's just so wonderful and open and yeah. such a good guy. Such, to honestly, I'd love you guys to meet him. He's one of the nicest people. He's just so, he'll get along with anyone. He's yeah, just that yeah. guy that I connect with. Mm. He's just such a nice guy. Yeah, so, yes, I love him for this. You, you sound like, uh, like everyone you've spoken about, you know, even when I was speaking to you earlier, everyone on, on set with you guys, you, you've just spoken so warmly about it. It sounds as if the whole, you know, everyone you work with, <coughs> everyone, you know, just, it's just one big family. No, so literally, a lot, a lot of people say that, but we genuinely are like one big family. And what was special about this is that it, all of our, not even just characters, but as actors, so many, normally when you get on set with like actors who are bigger than you or you know whatever, they can act a bit weird and it can be a bit of an uncomfortable environment. Yeah. 
but where we was all, this for us, every single one of us, this was a dream job for us. So we was all in the same boat, just as excited as each other. And this was a dream for all of us. So just that in itself just really connected us and brought us all together. Mm, sounds absolutely fantastic. And uh, I think we've got time for one more question. Um, is there one more question out there? Were you annoyed that the BBC didn't give the show as much publicity as it should have had? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, being, having worked with the BBC myself and having my own teams on BBC One, I will speak for you, and that is they're absolutely useless. Uh, <laughs> and you wouldn't be allowed to say that, I'll say it for you. I would think that they would be absolutely peeved off but wouldn't be able to say <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> BBC America is really good. BBC, America. <laughs> uh, BBC over here. But it just seems because like, I've got a teenager and yeah. her friends are they, the sort of target audience, but yeah. most of them didn't even know the show existed. Until she introduced them. That's a shame them because there. it's a Doctor Who spin off, and like, essentially every Doctor Who fan should have knew about class. I've met people that don't even know class existed, and that's mm. such a shame because they should know. Yeah. And that's what America, BBC America have done really well because now anyone that watches Doctor Who will watch Class, oh, and that's how they should have done it. But essentially, when they put it on BBC Three first, and then on, they put it on BBC One at ten forty-five, yeah. showing yeah. two episodes at a time <laughs> after the news. So essentially, two, well, that's it. where they're showing BBC two, BBC Three, they've, they've got to say that they're sixteen or over to be allowed to watch it. Yeah. Whereas. Yeah, no, it was, just, it was just so weird. It. it was just so weird. Um, it was just so weird. BBC were not a class act. <laughs> um, outside, uh, you know, you guys are quite active as well. I know, Craig, you're a bit of a YouTuber, right? Yeah, yeah, small YouTube channel, but I mess around gaming with but just tea bags. <laughs> yeah, of course, I did it. One episode of. Oh, so. No, that's obscure re <laughs> reference to <laughs> yeah. Throwing we, we, we should the qualify <laughs> exactly what you meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Generally, my, my YouTube channel is actually very innuendo filled, and I make an absolute fool of myself on. So but that's just me. That's just me when I'm on my own, yeah. being a bit of a. He's got like this laptop that is huge. I think it's the same laptop as Sheldon Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Did you says. build a laptop? My, my PC, yeah, I built my PC. How amazing is that? <laughs> I, it really wasn't. I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, YouTube, PC. how to build a PC. <laughs> there we go. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, go, go to the YouTube channel if you want to know how to uh, uh, build your own PC. Uh, Fale, Greg, we've, the time has caught us up. I, myself, have loved interviewing you. It's been absolutely superb. I guess you guys have loved this interview too. Sure, put your hands together. <laughs>